In this video, I will show you how to use a Firebase database with Flutter. The first thing you need is to go on console.firebase.google.com and create a brand new project. And I will call this one Flutter Pro Firebase. And now continue. Next, AI assistant for your product. I don't like Gemini, so continue. Google Analytics, we can accept this. Select an account, default account for Firebase, create a project. So this will take maybe 30 seconds, so you can wait for this. And after this, I will show you what to do. Perfect, you can click on continue next. And from there, what we need to do is connect Flutter with Firebase. And to do this, you can do it manually like this, or you can use the Firebase CLI. This will go much faster. So for this video, I will show you how to connect with Firebase CLI. You will go on Google, you will write Flutter Firebase CLI, and you will select this link, add Firebase to your Flutter app. Once you're inside this section, you will need to scroll down until you find the section. If you haven't already, install the Firebase CLI. So we will install this. I will open this in a new tab. And then I will click on the section Mac OS. If you are on Windows, click Windows. This will bring you to this section. And what you will need to do is copy this line of code. So you need to install the Firebase tool. We will go back inside the terminal and you can paste this thing and press enter. This will install the Firebase tools. And you can see that I already have this inside my computer. If you need to upgrade your Firebase tool, you can run this command and press enter. Then you will need to put the password of your computer and press enter. So now I have the latest version of the Firebase tool. What is the next step? What you need to do next is to run the Firebase login. I will go back inside my terminal and I will paste this inside. You will see that I am already logged in inside my test account, fluttermap at gmail.com. So what I will do is I will say Firebase logout and I will log in once again. Now it's time to run Firebase login once again and you will see what is the process. First, you need to say yes and then you will open a new tab. From there, you will select your Google account and you will press continue. Then you click hello. Perfect, so you have connected Firebase CLI and now you should be logged in. So let's go back inside the terminal so you can see that we have successfully logged in. All right, so easy peasy lemon squeezy, what should be the next step? If you scroll down, you will see that you should run this thing, Firebase project list. This will just show you a list of all your projects. So it's not really important. And next, if you scroll down, you will eventually find a section called Firebase in it. But this is to initialize a Firebase project, not necessarily with Flutter. So we don't need to run this. So for now, we can close this page and we can go back to this one. The next thing to do is we have already logged in. So we need to activate the Flutter Fire Clip. I will copy this and I will go back inside my terminal and paste this and press enter. Perfect. So now we can set up Firebase with Flutter inside our application. The next thing to do is to run the Flutter Fire configure. I will copy this. I will go inside my terminal and I will paste and press enter. So this will fetch all the available Firebase project. And if you remember at the start, we created our project called Flutter Pro Firebase. And you can see that you have the option create a new project from this place but sometimes it will create bugs. So I prefer to create the project from the console and then select it from this place. So we will click Flutter Pro Firebase and press enter. After this, because I only want to set this up with Android and iOS, I will press space in order to remove the macOS web in Windows. From there, we can press enter. All right, so this will register the application for iOS and Android. So if we go back inside our console and we refresh, you will see that the Android should already be set up. And you can see that the Flutter Pro Android is set up. This is pretty good. And if we go back inside the terminal, you see that this is registering the iOS app at the moment. All right, so everything has completed. So if we go back inside the console and we refresh, you will see that the two applications are registered, the one with Android and the one with iOS. So this was way faster than doing it manually like this and putting all the bullshit inside your project. So the next step is... But the first thing you have to do is to go inside the build and the real-time database. From there, you can click on create a database. I will select United States US Central and say next. But for now, we will set those basic rules and I will click enable. So let's start with the rules. Usually people get afraid of the rules inside Firebase and I get it. I will take the time to explain you how it works. So I will click demis. And the first thing you have to understand is you have two different rules. You have the read and the write and you can use the read and the write inside different type of folders. So let's say I go inside my data and I create something. I will say a key, this would be data one, by example. It doesn't really matter. And for the value, I will just put nothing inside. It's okay. And after this, we will create another one, which would be data two and press enter. Okay, so if we go inside the rules, 
right now, we cannot read and we cannot write anything. So if you try to connect your Firebase to this database, nothing will work because you cannot read and you cannot write. All right, so let's say you want your user to be able to read the data inside the database, but only if they are authenticated. So for this, what you could say is you could write auth is not equal to null. But if you try to save, it will not work because you have to put this inside brackets, just like this. And now you could publish this and only if you are authenticated, you could read the data. All right, that's fine. But what if you want inside the data one, everybody, even though they are not authenticated, you want them to be able to read and to write the data. So for this, you will go inside the rules and what you will create is another set. You will say the data one. So everybody inside the data one file will be able to write and read the data. So what you will do is you will copy this, you will go inside and you will paste this inside. I will reformat. And what you will say is you will say true and you will say also true. So just like that, you could publish and everybody that is inside the file data one will be able to read and write. So this will be true only for the data one. All the rest will take these rules. By example, the data two will go under these rules. So you need to be authenticated in order to read, but in order to write, you are not allowed. So what you could do is copy this and then write under, paste it and write data two. And this will be able to read, but not able to write. So you will just reformat and publish. So in this case, anybody can read and write in the data one. In the data two, anybody can read and nobody can write. And all the other files that you will create inside the database will follow these rules. So you need to be authenticated in order to read and nobody can write anything else. So this is how the rules pretty much work. So what I will do is I will delete all of this and I will set this as true and true. And I will publish this. So I'm doing this just to simplify the explanation of how the create, read, update, and delete works. But you should create your own set of rules from what I told you. All right, so now you understand a little bit how the rules work. For this, I will need to go back inside the code and let's create the database service. You can create this in any folder. I will just create a new file called the database service dot dart. This is where all the code to reach the database will be. And then we will use it inside the UI in order to do all these actions. So in order to reach the database inside Firebase, you will need to add a dependency, which will be the Firebase database. And let's press enter. So this was a shortcut. I used the command shift P, but if you want, you can go directly inside the pubspec.yarm and add your Firebase database. And next you will have to say get pubspec in order to be able to use this thing. All right, so let's close this and go back inside the database service. Now I will show you the code, but let me tell you that after I will give you my best recommendation in order to use the database. So let's start with the code. First, you will need to create a Firebase database instance. You will reuse this everywhere in order to create, read, update, and delete. When you will create data in the database, you need the path. So where is this information going to be saved? Is it inside data one, data two, or something else? Next, you need also to give the data that you want to save. So we will save this as a map of string dynamic, but I will show you later what is my recommendation. And next you use the async and await because this is a future void. And keep in mind that the create can also update because it remove all the data to put some new data over it. And so for this, you will need to use the Firebase database that reference in order to create a reference to the current path. So this will be data one by example, if I want to read the data inside this file. And once you have this, the only thing left is to use the reference you created to set the new set of data. I will show you how to connect the create later inside the button of the application. Next, you will create the read. The read will only require a path because we just want to read the data. We don't want to set anything. You do the same logic. You create a reference with the Firebase database reference, the child, and you put the path inside, by example, data one or data two which are the value we have set inside the database right now, but it can be anything else. And once you call the reference.get, this will return you a snapshot of the data. And then if the snapshot exists, we will return the information. Otherwise we will return null. So that's why the future is a data snapshot with the question mark, because it can be null. 
Next, for the update, you need the path and you need the data that you want to update. For this, we do the same reference logic. We create the child and the path inside. And then we use this reference to update the data. This one will require a map of string dynamic. But again, later, you will understand why I don't really use this thing and I prefer to use the create instead. But for now, let's talk about how to delete the data. This one is pretty straightforward. You just need to set the path where you want to delete the data. You create a reference with this path inside. And then at this location, you remove the data. All right, so let me show you how to use this inside your application. So what you should do is use a state management in order to manage all these data. But that's not the point of the video. You just want to create, read, update, and delete. So let's go inside the Firebase database buttons. And inside, we will use this thing. We will say database service dot create. Inside, I will put the path data one, but you can put another path and it will create the data anyway. After this, you need to put a map of string dynamic. So we will say name by example. And then inside I will say Flutter Pro. I just need to put my semicolon. And now at this point, I will refresh the application and I will click on create. So at this point, you see that we have an error. So what you should do is close the application and relaunch the application. I will click on main, I will click on debug. And this can happen sometime when you add Firebase. For example, if you had the Firebase database or Firebase authentication, this can create some bugs. So you need to restart the application. It usually creates a bug because when you launch the application, this is triggered, the Firebase initialize app. But if you add the plugin Firebase database after you have launched the application, this can create some errors. So that's why we relaunch the application. The application just relaunched and now I will click on create once again. If we go inside the database, you can see that data. If we go inside, we have the name Flutter Pro, so it does work. So make sure that you refresh your application if you add the Firebase database plugin. So let's go back inside the Firebase database button. So one thing I forgot was to put the async and the await because the create is a future void. So that's pretty cool, but I don't like to save the information as a map. As I told you, I will tell you what is my best practices. So let's go inside create. And what we will do instead is we will save this as a string. So now let's go back inside our page. And instead of sending a map, we will send a JSON map. So now let's click on create once again and go back inside the database. You can see that this is how it's saved. The reason I like to do this is because it's super simple to end all the data inside the database and inside the phone directly because you want to save the data at these two different places. If your user don't have any internet connection, you want the user to have access to some data. And this is where you save it locally on the phone. So I like to save the data this way in the database and in the local database also. Anyway, so I will tell you a little bit more about how to handle your data later. But for now, let's continue in order to create all these things. For the read, what we'll do is we'll say async and inside we'll say await. And then we'll say database service dot read. And inside we need to put the path. So let's put the same path for now, data one. And this read will return you a future data snapshot. So what you can do is you can take this information, say snapshot is equal to this, and you will need to quick fix and import the Firebase database. And now we can say print and use the snapshot, which can be null. So we use the question mark and we say dot value. And now let's save. And now when we go inside the terminal and we click on read, you will see that we have this information name Flutter Pro. So we can retrieve this information. But what if you put a different path? For example, you put data four, which doesn't exist. This should just print null inside the database. So let's click on read and open the terminal and you have it null. Okay, so now let's update the data. As I told you, I don't really like this one. I prefer to set up everything with create and create a JSON string instead because it's easier to handle the data with the local and the server database. But anyway, let me show you how it works. We will start by using the async and the await. And inside we will say database service dot update. Inside we need the path. So let's say data two. And inside we will put a map saying name. And the name will be Flutter Pro. Now let's save and try this. When we click on update, this will change the data two with this information. So let's try it out with data one instead. So if I replace this for data one and I save and I click update you will see that the data one will change also. And now one thing I want to show you is 
if you try to do it with data three, which this data doesn't exist, and we save and we click update, you will see that this will still work. So let's go inside. You see that we have data three. So the difference between the create and update is the update will just add the new value. So if we go inside data three and we change this for super name and we say super Flutter Pro, and then we save and click update, you will see that this will keep the name Flutter Pro. That's cool, but we need still one last thing and it's the delete. So let's create the async and then the await and then we'll say database service dot delete. Inside, we just need to put the path. So I will say data three and put my semicolon and save. So now let's go inside the database and click on delete. You see that this will delete the data three completely. Okay, so this was pretty cool, but now let me show you why I prefer to save this data as a JSON string. The reason is pretty simple is because when I save the data locally on the phone, I save it as a string. So then when I retrieve the data from two different places, the database and the local phone, I know that the format is the same. So then I can compare the data, use some timestamp in order to know which one has the latest value, and then always have the good data for the user. This is one of the biggest problem with mobile application is how to handle the data which is on the phone and on the database. Because sometimes the user don't have any internet connection and this can create a lot of problems. If you want to learn more about how to authenticate your user with Firebase, you can click this video. If you need more information about how to learn Flutter, you can click on this video. And if you just want to learn how to handle your data the right way with clean architecture, you can get this application at floodamap.com. That's it. See you in the next one and bye-bye.